Hey, if you'd like to support the production of more MOOF University video tutorials, then please visit the support MOOF section on MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. Now that we've discussed the overview of how glycerophospholipids are made, I want to consider how the head group is actually being added on. So if we could just consider this, we have diisoglycerol, phosphoric acid, and some alcohol that will be attached to the polar head group. These three things have to come together to make the glycerophospholipid. What you can imagine is that there will be a dehydration reaction here where that water will come off and it will link those two components. Uh, there will be a dehydration reaction here that would link those two components. And then we would have our glycerophospholipid. Right. Now, the issue is that these three components cannot simply come together like this. One of the groups, either the diacyl glycerol or the head group, must be activated first. Now, the question might be, okay, which one actually needs to be activated? The diacyl glycerol or the uh, polar head group alcohol? And the answer is that either can. Either can be activated. And this is the reason there are two methods for actually adding the head group to, the, to make the glycerophospholipid. So let's take a look. We've got method one, which will basically be from starting from an activated diacylglycerol, and then method two, which will be from the activated alcohol. So let's take a look at method one first. So method one, we have an activated diacylglycerol. The activated diacylglycerol is actually this thing right here, this entire molecule. This is called the CDP DAG. So here you can see the diacylglycerol portion here, right? This part here, that's the diacylglycerol portion. And the rest of this here, actually let me maybe do it like this. This part here is the diacylglycerol portion. And the rest of this, including these two phosphates, is the CDP portion from the nucleotide. Right, so this here is cytosine, this little portion here. That's the nucleotide base, cytosine. Right, and those are the, the DP, the diphosphate portion there. Now, when this CDP is attached to the diacylglycerol, the diacylglycerol is considered activated. So this is the activated diacylglycerol. So this polar head group over here, um, this polar head group alcohol here is going to join this activated diacylglycerol and actually be nucleophilically attack at this phosphate portion here. It's going to attack that phosphate, thus um, kicking off this, this, these electron pairs here onto the, oops, onto this oxygen. Okay, and then we have a CMP that leaves, and then this alcohol portion will be connected to this phosphate. So what ends up happening is that, that CMP portion leaves, and then we're left with a glycerophospholipid where the diacylglycerol portion and the phosphates are connected to this polar head group alcohol. Okay. Now you might be wondering, okay, that's great, and that makes sense, um, but how did we even get this CDP DAG thing? How did we activate this diacylglycerol here? What we did was we started with phosphatidate, phosphatidate, and we invested a CTP, and phosphatidate has a phosphate on it, CTP has three, so that's four phosphates that we start off with, okay, and then we have CDPDAG, so that's two phosphates there, right, two phosphates there, and that's it, where do the other two phosphates go? They came off as a pyrophosphate. We'll see the details of this later, okay, um, in the, in the, following videos in the series. But that that's basically the idea here is that we started from the activated diacylglycerol and the alcohol acted as the nucleophile. Now method two doesn't start with an activated diacylglycerol, it instead starts from an activated alcohol. So instead of creating a CDP DAG, we create a CDP alcohol. So again, same idea here. This portion, uh, we got the cytosine portion here, uh, the CDP here up into with including these two phosphates. And then we've got the alcohol here. So now this is the activated alcohol. This is the activated alcohol. 
And over here, this diacylglycerol is free. So what's going to happen is that the diacylglycerol's OH group here will act as a nucleophile, attack this phosphate. Oops. That's kind of an ugly arrow. Let's do that again. It'll attack this phosphate, kicking off these electrons and kicking off a CMP. So the CMP will fall off again to give us a glycerol phospholipid. Okay. So again, you might ask, how did we get that CDP alcohol? In this case, it was a little bit different how we got it. Not quite the same way as, as how we got the CDP diacylglycerol. We started with the polar head group alcohol and we invest ATP with a kinase. Invest ATP with a kinase. And that, that one of those phosphates gets attached to the polar head group. So we get a polar head group with a phosphate group attached to it. And then ADP is left over. Once we have that, CTP can be invested. And then the polar head group then has the CDP portion attached to it with two phosphates and a pyrophosphate leaves. Again, the details of which will make a little bit more sense in the following videos. But in either way, in either case, either method gives us the same molecule, a glycerophospholipid. One thing to mention is how this occurs in eukaryotes and prokaryotes. In eukaryotes, both methods are possible, whereas in prokaryotes, only method one can occur. So that's something that we will investigate in the next two videos. Hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and be sure to share the video with anyone who you think might find it helpful. Thanks and happy studying.